prejudice, bigotry and persecution have caused untold human suffering. But now a new age of interreligious understanding and cooperation is dawning. People of many faiths are praying together for peace and goodwill. At the end of the fifth assembly of the World Conference on Religion and Peace held in Melbourne, participants gathered for a dawn vigil at Mornington Beach. And then after breakfast, for the third World Day of Prayer for Peace. It is a day dedicated to peace. We devote the actions of our body, our thoughts and our words for peaceful life. Shabbat Shalom. עושה שלום במרומיו, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, ואמרו אמן. The first day of prayer had been held at Assisi in 1986, when, before the Cold War started to fall, the Pope invited religious leaders to join him in prayer for peace. Dear friends, I have the honor and pleasure welcoming all of you for our World Day of Prayer in this town of Assisi. Let me begin by thanking you from the bottom of my heart for the openness and goodwill with which you have accepted my invitation to pray at Assisi. As a link with this first day of prayer at Assisi, a carving of St. Francis of Assisi was taken to Mornington, and also a sacred lamp from Mount Hei in Japan, where the second day of prayer for peace had been held. I believe this momentum of prayer begun in Assisi and continued in Mount Hiei in 1987 is of profound importance in our search for world peace. For it is as men and women... These days have been supported by the prayers of millions who have joined in the week of prayer for world peace, or the one million minutes of peace appeal, or who regularly say the universal peace prayer. hope that people of all religions could together promote world peace was one of the dreams of those who called together at Chicago in 1893, the world's parliament of religions, an event which continues to inspire the interfaith movement. The oldest of the international interfaith organizations is the International Association for Religious Freedom, Founded at the turn of a century, it has especially worked to safeguard the rights of religious minorities and to encourage people of different religions to share in social service projects. A recent congress was held in Hamburg. Almost 90 years ago, North American Unitarians invited leaders of religious groups in Europe and Asia to meet in Boston. They had a vision of a world community of religions that would promote mutual understanding and cooperation. They believed that by greater understanding of one another's religions and cultures, they could help create a world that respected differences, a world in which all people could live together in peace and freedom. The World Congress of Faiths was founded in 1936 by Sir Francis Young Husband, who had a mystical experience of oneness outside Lhasa in Tibet in 1903. WCF publishes World Faith's Encounter, formerly World Faith's Insight, 
arranges conferences and spiritual retreats. Often these are held at Amadan near Bath, and here members are discussing a talk about Swami Vivekananda by Professor Hal so been, uh, Participants include David and Celia Storey, secretaries of the International Coordinating Committee for 1993. The Temple of Understanding was founded in the 1960s by Juliet Hollister, pictured here with its executive director, Dr. Peter Lawrence, at the United Nations building. The Temple of Understanding has held a series of spiritual summit conferences. The World Conference of Religion and Peace also has strong links with the United Nations and has tried to make the United Nations aware of religious concerns and to alert the religious world to the major issues facing humanity. Its third assembly was held in Nairobi, Kenya. <laughs> The first task of interfaith groups, whether local or international, has been to encourage people to meet. As the participants of a Melbourne Assembly of the World Conference of Religion and Peace did on its opening day. And as people meet, they begin to rid themselves of old prejudices, learn what others believe, and discover what they can do together. But this public education is a massive task, slowly achieved through conferences, lectures, meetings, meditation, and visits to each other's places of worship, and to each other's homes to learn about varied customs. And this leads into common service of those in need. Such meetings and activities take place in many parts of the world. In Korea, at the invitation of a one Buddhist, a conference was held to see how religions could help forward the reunification of that country. In Costa Rica, where the United Nations University of Peace is situated, there was a conference which brought together members of the world's religions and the indigenous religions. In Moscow, leaders of all religions met to voice their concern to preserve the planet and to safeguard the environment. The environment that sustains life on Earth is in peril. Human actions are responsible. Interfaith tours are another way to create understanding. Jerusalem, the city of peace, although sadly so often a city of conflict, is a place holy to Jews, Christians and Muslims, and has been the setting the tours arranged by the World Congress of Faiths and by the Council of Christians and Jews. There is much for which to be thankful in the growth of interreligious cooperation and understanding, and Thanksgiving has itself been a way of bringing people together. But the spirit of cooperation has still to spread its influence so that together we build a world house where all people and enjoy the gift of life. I will give you a telephone. Whenever you are in doubt, or when self becomes too much with you, apply the following test. Recall the place of the poorest and the weakest man whom you may have seen, and ask yourself if the step you contemplate is going to be of any use to him. Will he gain anything by it? 